Personal income rose almost 1% in August, the second largest increase this year. And consumer spending was up 1.2% for the month. More signs that the economy is improving. Max? Silver prices also improved today, going up a nickel, but that's a minor change for metal whose prices fluctuated wildly over the past year. Tonight in part two of his special assignment series, Dan Quartz reports on silver and some of the men who are heavily involved in its ups and downs. When the price of silver shot up toward $50 an ounce last year, Americans lined up in thousands to sell their silver bowls, candlesticks, knives, and forks to be melted down into bullion. Actually, such sales were nothing new. Every year since World War II, silver users have depended on such recycling to provide almost half of the demand for silver. That's because the world consumes far more silver each year than it produces. The difference has to be made up from existing stocks. Some of it goes right back into the same products, such as silverware and jewelry, which was melted down. But a lot more goes into industrial goods. For example, in the U.S., making photographic film takes 65 million ounces of silver a year, and electrical equipment another 37 million ounces. Sterling silverware is number three in the use of silver at 18 million ounces a year. That's what makes silver so different from gold. 40% of all the gold mined each year simply goes into bank vaults as a form of wealth. 80% of all silver is used in industry, and the above-ground supply is dwindling. Seven years ago, Herbert and Bunker Hunt, sons of the legendary Texas oil billionaire H.L. Hunt, decided the chronic shortage of silver made it a good investment. So they started buying, slowly enough at first that the price rose only gradually. But last year, as the Hunts bought more and more, the price skyrocketed, soaring from $9 an ounce to $52 an ounce, an increase of 580% in just six months. That made silver as an investment even better than gold, but it also drove up the cost of products containing silver, causing a record rise in wholesale prices. According to James Stone, chairman of the government's Commodities Futures Trading Commission, a lot of people were hurt. The silver-related industries laid a lot of people off. There were more than 5,000 people who lost their jobs and all of that. Some users are still pinched at today's level. There's no possibility of keeping up to it. In one week alone, it went up and down almost $48. And it's, it's you know, you can't do that. It's no way to run a business. But the people who run the silver exchanges in Chicago and New York were mainly afraid that the hunts would accumulate so much of the available silver that they could set any price they wanted. So they changed the trading rules several times until the hunts were forced to sell and almost nobody else was allowed to buy. To put it in the terms of a football analogy, the game starts, the rules are changed, and finally when you get to the last quarter, the uh, referee says, only the other side can have the ball. That drove the price down and cost the hunts more than a billion dollars. And nobody knows how much was lost by small investors who jumped on the hunt silver bandwagon. In recent weeks, as silver staged a comeback from $16 an ounce to $21, the market has been fueled by rumors that the hunts are buying again. No, I'm not back in the silver market, but I still have an investment in silver bullion. So are the hunts? who still holds 63 million ounces, worth about a billion and a quarter, soured on silver? I'm as bullish on silver today as I was when I first got in it in 1973. And I think silver is still a good investment. Losing a billion dollars didn't even threaten the hunt's solvency. But people who don't have their kind of money should never forget that trading in precious metals, gold as well as silver, is a high-risk gamble and nobody should put in one dollar more than he's prepared to lose. Dan Quartz, ABC News, Dallas. Cheese. Introducing Minute Rice and Cheese, the delicious new side dish that pleases with cheese. Simply make minted rice as usual, but when water boils, add one slice of your American cheese for each serving. Add minted rice when cheese melts. That's it. 
A tasty, creamy minute rice side dish that pleases with cheese. Darling, please. More minute rice and cheese?